Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Good afternoon and good evening to you from the Savage Nation, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Trump to dine with new pals Pelosi and Schumer. So I didn't know whether to open the show with Masterpiece Theater or The Godfather. I figured I would mix the two together since I'll let you figure out uh, who the music applies to. This is very interesting to me. Trump to dine with new friends Schumer and Pelosi. Now many of you will say, that's great. That's just great, because that's what Ivanka wanted, and that's what most Democrats wanted. It's not what the conservative base would like to see. They'd like to see both Pelosi and Schumer in prison. But since the base has been used as a footstool to get where they are, they don't need you anymore. They've done the calculation, and they figure they can lose 30%, 40% of you and gain 34% or more, if not more, from the middle, and you can do what with yourself? Figure it out. In other words, it's politics as usual. We didn't elect a businessman. We elected a politician. And we're going to find out what part of the agenda we get as the politician emerges who we didn't know existed. It's politics as usual. So he's dining with his new pals, Pelosi and Schumer. And, of course, you know what Schumer and Pelosi want, don't you? You haven't figured it out yet? Well, Schumer doesn't want a border wall, but he wants the DREAM Act and Obamacare fixed. I wonder what Pelosi wants. So tonight, Schumer is going to demand open borders, no border wall, and he wants the DREAM Act, which means... I just love the word dreamers. Of course they're dreamers. Wouldn't you be a dreamer if you were taking away resources that were not yours? Wouldn't you be a dreamer if you were stealing resources, scarce resources at that, that were there for American children, not for children who didn't belong here to begin with? I know it sounds harsh, But let me tell you something. We're in a sinking lifeboat, and there's only so many people who can fit in that sinking lifeboat. You keep bringing people on that sinking lifeboat, and everyone dies. So I looked at the dining menu for tonight, and I saw what they're going to be eating. It says it here somewhere. Uh, I know that Trump likes to eat uh, meatloaf. That I know. That's a very, very important thing to know uh, because I dined with the president. He ate ice cream at that time, not meatloaf. If he had offered me the meatloaf, I probably would have eaten it. I eat it once a year. The New York Post reports it's unclear what the menu will include, though Trump is known to favor the meatloaf served up at the White House. I don't know where served up comes from. Is that a colloquialism? I thought it would be served at the White House. What do you mean served up? Who's this reporter? Okay, as well as well-done steak with ketchup, another very classy dish that I'm sure will go over well when the French come to dinner. Schumer's favorite sandwich is dubbed the Shumwich. It's a gut-busting mix of roast beef, banana peppers, pickled jalapenos, extra onions, extra tomatoes, two layers of schmaltz, extra fat pickles, mayonnaise, extra schmaltz, and mustard on hearty Italian bread. That's for Schumer. Pelosi, citing a northern Italian heritage, said that she likes a bologna sandwich with extra bologna made on special bologna bread that comes from Bologna, also risotto and pesto. But Pelosi also told Food and Wine magazine that she's been, quote, eating dark chocolate ice cream for breakfast for as long as I can remember. Well, it's one thing those of us who are health attuned have learned today, knowing that Pelosi's been eating dark chocolate ice cream for breakfast for as long as I can remember. We know that dark chocolate ice cream for breakfast Definitely doesn't prevent senility. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Phone number is 855 As I say, I'm broadcasting from my studio in Beverly Hills. It's hard not to meet a celebrity here. It seems everyone's a celebrity. On every street corner, there's another celebrity. With all the reality shows, it's hard not to meet a celebrity. In fact, when you go to dinner, everyone's a celebrity. Everybody in every restaurant is a star. 
or work for a star or is producing a star or is directing a star. There's not a person in any restaurant in Beverly Hills that isn't a star or related to a star. Why, just last night I rubbed shoulders with someone on a Real Housewives show. Isn't that amazing? Wow, was I honored. I was so honored to meet someone on a Real Housewives show. You have no idea what that did for my self-esteem. I'm sure when push comes to shove, Trump would rather have a Real Housewives star in the White House than a real talk show host. That I'm sure of. Trump to dine with new friends Schumer and Pelosi and the Real Housewives of Biloxi. How do you feel about that? Well, I'll tell you how I feel about that. Here's a couple of other stories on the Savage Nation. They're defacing statues because of the leftists who are running big cities. For example, in New York City, the Sandinista-loving left-wing fanatical mayor, de Blasio, started attacking statues that didn't represent Karl Marx or Karl Icahn. And so right away, the vermin in the street, the vandals, started defacing statues. They started with Columbus. They've gone on to others. And I'd like to ask you something. A piece of garbage in New York City just defaced a statue in New York, another one. I don't know about you, but to me it reminds me of ISIS when they took over certain cities. What do you think the punishment should be for defacing statues in America? Because I have my own opinion on that. But since we're talking about baloney, I'm not going to give you my opinion on that quite yet. I'll let you give me the reality of this. Living in a country where ISIS members, disguised as leftists who care about humanity, are defacing the statues that represent the heritage of this nation, whether it be Christopher Columbus or others, I'd like to know what you think, what do you think should be the punishment if you are caught defacing statues in the United States of America? Okay. 855-407-282 is the phone number. It's approximately, actually, it's exactly 12 minutes after the hour. Tommy on WABC, you're the first up. Go ahead. What's on your mind, Tommy? Hey, Dr. Savage, how are you doing? Listen, I think... Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Let's stop right there. I have a very bad migraine. I didn't sleep last night. I'll tell you why later. Never ask me how I'm doing. I'm not a normal talk show host. You don't know me. I don't know you. Just get on the air, whoever it is, and, and make your point. So let's start again. Tommy, WABC, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Doc Savage, I think Trump is getting close to Pelosi and Schumer for just one reason. To, to, to get the Republican leadership jealous. And, you know, you've got to understand one thing, Doc Savage. Yeah, No, no, you explain it to me. You're, you're a smart talk show. Go ahead. Trump is no dummy. He didn't make it. He didn't no, of course not. He used the base to become president. Dummy isn't. Yeah, but the Dream Act, nothing's passed yet. Uh, he didn't become a billionaire. So let me, let me ask you, all of you true believers, when he passes the Dream Act, you're going to tell me he's outsmarting everybody again? When he goes along with Schumer and Pelosi on the Dream Act, which will happen because Ivanka wants that, what are you going to tell me? Don't you see he's playing quadruple chess and you don't see that even though he passed the Dream Act, he really didn't pass the Dream Act? That's what you're going to tell me? Yeah. None has, none has happened so far. So why do you prejudge? Did you hear the question I just raised? L let's move ahead. Try to project in the future. Use your imagination. Okay. Three months from now, we read that Trump passed the DREAM Act, and he's letting all of the 800,000 freeloaders stay here uh, on, full, uh, on full benefits. What are you going to say then? It was just a trick? But Doc Savage, it didn't happen yet. You don't know how to project a thought? into the future and imagine when it happens? You're projecting something that's negative. That didn't happen. I asked you what if it did happen, I'm trying to ask you. Happen, it's going to hurt the base. But listen, Trump... I'm, I'm just said, what if it did happen? How would you feel then? Okay, I, I'm, I would lose... I would, listen, the, the dream is... You just can't throw them out of the country, Dr. Savage. Oh, so, so you're a liberal. You want the dreamers to be given benefits. You, listen, you just can't... So why are you pretending that you're a supporter of Trump when you're a phony? I'm a conservative, Dr. Savage. I'm you're nothing. You're a phony. You're a two-talker, a double-talker. You just said you can't throw the dreamers out of the country. What does that make you? It's not. They came here with no fault of their own. Okay? You, the, uh, oh, isn't that sad? So, in other words, throw our own native children under the bus for illegal alien children. Is that what you're saying? Before you do that, put the wall up. You've got to have the border. All right. You know what? This kind of caller, I had a single migraine and I have a double migraine. Thank you very much, but never call the show again. Please call NPR. WG Day G. Oh, that's a tough one. I almost couldn't pronounce the call letters. G D J. That's good, Michael. Line six, you're on the Savage Nation. What's your topic? 
No answer. No one home. Oh, I can see what kind of day this is going to be. Hello, Jim call screener. You see me in the Skype screen? I just pressed the button and no one's there. Caller. There's no one on line six. So here's what we're going to do. No call screening. I'm taking them dead cold. What's the point of call screening if I'm getting either a dummy or a, or, or a dodo? Line one, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? I need to know how or, or where I can get Savage uh, on the radio in Venice, Florida. Wait, excuse me. You're listening to the show now. So what are you asking me? How to hear the show? I'm in Colorado right now. Wait a minute. You, now you're. This is a good one. Hold it. Please repeat the question because although I have a double migraine, I really don't want to have a cerebral hemorrhage. What did you just say? Okay. Uh, in Venice, Florida, we cannot find a station that carries your show. So how are you listening to me now? In Colorado. I'm in. On what sta On which station? KRDO, I think. Well, there you go. Then move to Colorado. There's your answer. Thanks for the call. That's all simple. Move to Colorado. If you can't get me, leave your city. It's not worth living in. Line three, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage, no. I'm calling from Detroit. And last Thank God. Night, yeah, and last night they had a Antifa rally, and all the bikers from Michigan showed up, and uh, you were right. The bikers did show up. And what did the Antifa, uh, what did the brave men of Antifa do then? Dr. Savage, they ran like little children off to the nursery school. You mean all of the women with mean faces and clipped hair ran away? They wiggled away? <laughs> the bikers were trying to pick up on them and they ran the other way. Oh my God, I knew this would happen. Didn't I predict that when they keep this up, the bikers and the plumbers and the carpenters are going to have had enough? And they're not going to wait for Trump to tell them what to do, and they're going to chase off these people? Wow, that's a heck of a story. And I bet they did it without threatening anybody, or I bet without hitting anybody, correct? Nope, they were there just to support and to show their presence. They did not threaten anybody. Isn't that good? No, look what we have to come to in America, that we have to go down to the level, well, I should say up to the level, of bikers in order to protect our rights in this country. It just shows you what we've come to. That is a beautiful, beautiful story. I guess God does exist after all. Yes, it's on YouTube, Dr. Savage. Let me, are, you, are you a biker yourself? No, but I have ridden in the past. I, 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 I don't. I am an Eddie, though, I'll tell you that. And I've, I, I have a 10-speed. Does that count? I'm sorry? I have a 10-speed bike. Is, does that make me a biker? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have a sense of humor. Hey, look, stay on the line. I'm going to give you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I would think even someone who wants to be a biker might find something in that book uh, to enjoy. Uh, okay, my friends, here's some horrible breaking news. One dead in mass shooting at Washington State High School. Horrible story. Don't know why. Don't know how. Don't know how to stop it. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We've talked a little bit about working together, and I said uh -huh. to the president, the best way he can show some good faith oh. is support the Dreamers Everything. Bill, uh, supported by Senators uh, Graham and Turncoat. Durbin, bipartisan, urge Turbin that we Durbin. move it to the floor rather quickly and get it done. No, don't move it to the floor, Chuck. Move it to the toilet. That's where it belongs. Did you hear the audacity of this corned beef eating phony? Did you hear what that corned beef eating big mouth phony just said? And in that quiet little voice of his all of a sudden, oh, we've talked a little bit about working together. And I said to the president, best way to support is support the Dreamers bill. Uh-huh. Supported by Senators. Lindsey Graham is an example of someone we should respect. Lindsey Graham is a two-faced, backstabbing opposition figure. Durbin, I have to tell you who he is. Durbin is known as Turbin Durbin. He stabbed the Marines in the back many times verbally. You've heard that. So we're going to use these left-wing fanatics as an example. These open borders, Cretans. That's his example of showing a little good faith. The best good faith he could show is throw you in jail. 
Listen to number 09 now. Listen to listen how audacious this Corby feeder is. I made it so, so clear to the president that there is not going to be a wall in the appropriations process you, or in others. And you, I heard that somebody, I don't know who it was, Mark it Short, was issued a statement that says we're not going to tie the wall to dreamers. That's a very, very good thing and good progress. I've told him over and over again. At one point he said to me, go easy on the wall. I said no. Now you know who's in charge of the government. You woke up and you found out two of the worst villains in American current American political history. And I'll call them villains for a reason. Anyone who's in favor of open borders is a villain as to our sovereignty. Anyone who's in favor of foreigner invaders, foreign invaders over children in this country who are deprived of those benefits is a villain. I'll go down the list. He said, I made it clear to the president. Now, this is a minority leader, meaning I don't mean minority in terms of his ethnicity. I'm talking about a member of the minority party. They have no ultimate power. The only power they have is the power given to them by the turncoat weakling Republicans who we put in office. That's the only place they get their power from. So this loser, Schumer, is now suddenly running the government. He made it clear to my president that there's not going to be a wall. We didn't elect you, Schumer. You were just diselected. And now you're telling me there's going to be no wall? I think we need a wall around Brooklyn, frankly. I think we ought to build a wall around Brooklyn to keep his ideas within Brooklyn because they don't belong in the rest of America. Let me tell you something, Schumer, that you don't know because you never travel outside of your little uh, Brooklyn uh, area. The rest of America does not want to grant amnesty to dreamers. Do you understand why? It's not that they're all members of the Ku Klux Klan. It's because they know what benefits have gone to the dreamers. Let me spell it out for you in dollars and cents, Schumer, something you know very well since you get all your money from big Wall Street brokers and, and will, w big Wall Street brokerages. Every dime that comes to you comes from gigantic Wall Street houses. Now you act like you're for the little guy because in New York City, the politics are run by illegal immigrants. Everybody knows there'd be no Governor Cuomo. And there'd be no Senator Schumer were it not the votes of the illegal aliens. I will go to the bank with that statement. If the illegal aliens had not voted, there would be no Chuck Schumer as senator. The average American taxpayer despises this man. And now he's telling us that he's controlling the president. And you're telling me that this compromise with Schumer is good for America? Then what is America? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. We must pass something uh, before we leave for Christmas, that's for sure. But in doing so, we will not only be protecting the dreamers, we will be protecting the integrity of our country. So thank you, for dreamers, for being stronger than anybody, for being stronger than anybody, and for actually taking some risks for your families uh, to keep America the country we take pride in being. Thank you for your patriotism. Pelosi is calling them the strongest amongst us and for their patriotism. Okay, we know she's deranged. Now, I want to show you how deranged this poor woman really is. You know, you could laugh about her, but when you realize octogenarians who are not all there are running the left-wing agenda and that so many deranged people don't understand how sick this is, listen to what she said in 06. This is, again, the deranged Nancy Pelosi in favor of illegal aliens sucking the benefits away from our own children. Listen to 06. A week and a half ago, I was in Chicago, and I saw this art exhibit that I was invited to see. It's called, and then they came for me. And it's about the internment of the Japanese American uh, patriots in our country who were, were not patriots, interned, idiot. In, interned into camps idiot. Uh, during World War II. While their family members were fighting for freedom for America and for the oh, world man. in World War II, uh, they were in camps, and, and they Roosevelt came for there. me. And uh, now no. they're Watch coming the for the dreamers. This Gideon is something that we owe these dreamers for their patriotism, their courage, their optimism to come forward. You know, the only question you have to ask yourself is why is she so in love with the dreamers and illegal aliens? There's only one answer. 
I don't think you have to be Einstein to understand why people like Pelosi, one of the richest women in the world, why Schumer, why are they so in love with the dreamers? Do you think they have that much compassion? Do you think they have more compassion than I do? I'm an actually, I am actually the son of an immigrant. I know what it's like to be poor. Would you really think they do this for compassion or because money flows straight up stream and the votes come their way? You understand that it's all cynical? Why is Schumer so in love with illegal aliens? Because without them, he wouldn't be elected to the Senate. It's the same with Pelosi. It's the same with all of them. The whole Democrat Party is built upon fraud. So I listen to this stuff, and I listen to the lies. I mean, I can deconstruct them and tell you what really is true about it. What's the point of wasting your time? Pelosi is, a, is, a, is so full of baloney. They're all patriots. All the Japanese who were interred were patriots. No, they weren't. They were ordinary Japanese. And as sad as that was, the internment was done by the evil Democrat, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the liberal socialist Democrat, by the way. He decided to inter the Japanese Americans in World War II. It was not an evil Ku Klux Klan member. It was a socialist Democrat who did it. And then she says the dreamers, who are stronger than anybody else. I think the poor white kids and the poor black kids are actually stronger than anyone else. I think the poor white kids and the poor black kids who go to school every day, maybe working after school, and get no benefits whatsoever because the benefits are being sucked away from them for non-citizen children. I think that the American children are far more uh, American and far more deserving of our respect. But maybe you don't want to hear any of this. Maybe you just want to hear the jokes and the punchlines. I can do that. Let's go to the callers. Pat on WABC, line two. What's on your mind? Mike, I talked to you right after the election. I feel your frustration. I told you there was a scene in The Godfather where Al Pacino tells Tom Hagen, Tom, you got to go. I need a wartime conciliary. With the move we're trying, it's going to get too crazy, too dangerous. And I was telling you, you were the wartime conciliary. We were all excited. It was after the election. And then he starts, he's drifting away. He's going to Pelosi. He's going to Schumer. And these other people that are calling up, they think that you're being mean. They think you, you don't have a heart. It's because they're not using their, their, their brain. They're not using their brain. Well, Pat, your analogy of the wartime conciliari, conciliari, I've never heard that with regard to a talk show host. I mean, I'm, I'm honored that you say that. But you see, Trump's war began when he was elected. It didn't end when he was elected. The new war and the real war began, as we well know. And what he's done is throw away everyone around him who was conservative. They are all thrown overboard. And as a result of that, he's moving toward the Democrat socialist model for government. I can't go along with it. It would make me uh, insincere and also unreliable as a, as a, as a uh, political figure. And remember, I'm a commentator. All I have is my integrity. I'm supposed to go along with Trump's move all of a sudden? I'm not going to do it. He's 100% wrong. If he thinks that we're going to sit here and say, we salute you, Mr. President, because you just said we're going to knock off the wall because Schumer doesn't want it, and we're going to accept the dreamers, I'm not going along with it. That's all there is to it. No, you're right. And we said this in November. The war was that day it started, November 9th or April it was. It wasn't the election. That's when it started. Why do you think I wrote Trump's war? Because I knew the war was going to begin when he got elected. That was the whole point of the book, which is to remind people what it was he promised and what it is we told him he had to do. So how much of that that is in my book, Trump's war, is has he actually done? Some of it, yes. To, to be very honest, and thank God he has done some very, very good things. And also you can look at it in the negative. He hasn't done some bad things. But if he goes to the primary reason we voted for him and he doesn't deliver on that, I'm afraid he's going to lose the entire base. That's my opinion. And here's what's going to happen. Let's, let's be very simple. There is, a large number, there, are a, there is a large number of people in this country who never vote. I specifically told you to come out and vote if you hadn't voted for the last four elections or three. I said, please come out and vote for Trump. And it was that small margin that put this man over the top. When that vote goes away, when they no longer vote, tell me who's going to be left from. The ladies in the Republican clubs, they're always going to go along with him. 
They don't really know what's going on. All they care that it has an R next to its name. And they get to go to places with funny hats and throw couches out of hotel windows. That's all they want to do is, is see balloons and couches flying from the 19th floor at Republican National Committee meetings. They don't really care what Republicanism is. It's a, it's a team to them, a club. But I'm not in it for a team or a club, and I am not a Republican. I'm an independent conservative. And I am saying to everyone listening to this show, if you're one of those people who came out and voted for the first time because of me or for your own reasons, I know you don't have to call me and tell me you're never going to vote again. And that is going to be the end of Trump's revolution. Maybe that's exactly what the swamp wants, is to be the end of you and end, and end of the revolution. They want the swamp to get higher, not lower. They have put hoses into the swamp, and they're not draining the swamp. They're adding to it. That's what's going on. I, I ter- It's a terrible situation, Pat, because people are saying, oh, but you're not loyal to him. You're not this. They don't even understand what loyalty is. I am loyal first to the truth. Next, I'm loyal to my audience. And most importantly, I'm loyal to God. And the day I start defying those loyalties, I should not be on radio and I will quit. I'll tell you that the day I suddenly become one of these quizlings or go, go along with the program because Trump's doing it, I will leave radio rather than do that. I'll tell you point blank. And if I lose half my audience, that's what's going to have to happen. If they're not smart enough to understand that loyalty means loyalty to an idea, not to a man, then I don't even want them to be disappointed in me because they don't know who I am. Now, that's a good speech, Pat, and I'm sending you a copy of a choice of books, God, Faith, and Reason, or Trump's War. Which book do you want? Well, I already gave Trump's war to my liberal aunt, like you said. I don't think it worked, though. So wait, wait, who, wait who'd you give it to? My lib, my liberal aunt didn't work, though. No, no, they're 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 like the older people are locked into their doxies. They can't be uh, altered, and the young brainwashed will never change until they actually have a job and a child, and they're in a relationship called a marriage. I know you you can't say marriage anymore. You have to say relationship, and you can't say husband and wife because you don't know whether it's a. Uh, uh, a sane marriage or an invented marriage. Husband, you can't say you have to say partner, like Gabby Hayes on a chuck wagon. My partner, Gabby Hayes, was in the, in the chuck wagon behind me. So which one do you want, Trump's war? Uh, no, I already have Trump's war, the God one. But real quick, when you call... What, you want my Godfather book? You want, me to, you want me to send you the Godfather, God, Faith, and Reason by Michael Savage, or Godfather, a DVD of the Godfather? <laughs> The new one, the new one. I'm joking. God, faith, and reason. The search to find God is the fun finding itself. All right, let's 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 pause right there. I don't want to overamp myself and scare the women. Uh, racist anthem spray painted on a 106-year-old Francis Scott Key statue in Baltimore. Now, whoever did this, whoever defaced this statue is identical to ISIS. They're cowards. They're vandals. They need to be hunted down. If there are any video cameras, I want them hunted down, and I want a stiff sentence for anybody, anybody who disrespects our statues. If you want a statue gone, you go through the statutes of the land. You do it democratically. If you deface it on your own and you are caught, I want to know what the uh, punishment should be. What do you think it should be? I know what it should be. What should the punishment be for defacing statues in America? First, it was Robert E. Lee, and nothing happened to the vermin who did it. Okay, then it was Columbus because de Blasio wanted Columbus gone and nothing happened to the vermin who defaced Columbus. Now they're spray spray painting the man who gave us the national anthem, Francis Scott Key. Tell me who would do a thing like that. Well, I know who would do a thing like that and I know what the punishment should be. But we don't live in Saudi Arabia. See, if we lived in Saudi Arabia, we'd have a punishment to fit the crime. I'll let you figure out what that punishment might be. KSFO, Gail, line six, topic, please. Yes, Michael, I just want to let you know that I'm um, really upset with Trump right now. And I was with him, you know, when he first came out, and I was a crew supporter prior to that. Um, Just, you know, everything he's doing right now, the people he's surrounding himself with, um, Pelosi makes me sick, Schumer makes me sick. Right. And... Right. Right, 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 and double right. And, and now he's having dinner with Pelosi and Schumer, and we're supposed to sit here like schmucks and say, that's great, he's, he's uh, keeping his enemies closer. That's not what he's doing. They are pulling him into their arena. He's not pulling them into our arena. Right. Sh- and- Schumer said, Schumer had the audacity, this interloper from New York, had the nerve to say, I told the president, I told the president this, I told the president that, who the hell does he think he is? What do you mean he told the president? He's a minority leader. He's not the majority leader. He's a minority leader. What do you mean I told the president? Who is he to come here and tell the president what to do? 
It's sick. So, you know, here's the problem. On the Internet, I'm getting a lot of attacks on my website, on my Twitter account, for people who don't understand that either you believe in something or you don't believe in something. If you don't believe in something, then what are you? Tell me. If you don't believe in something, if you have no principles, what, what are you? What, what are you made of? Who are you? Mellow. I'm sending you God, faith, and reason, by the Thank way. Thank you. Thank you very much. And before we go, i got to tell you something. I didn't sleep very well last night because I'm traveling. <laughs> and I, I'm going to tell you about Casper mattresses because I didn't have one here. <laughs> That's, you know, this fits right in. I was tossing and turning all night. I was drenched and covered in sweat, and I do have a migraine. And I did run the AC, and it gave me a double migraine. And I should have gotten rid of my heat-trapping mattress and slept as cool as I do in my other house on my Casper mattress, which I don't have <laughs> down here. This works fine for this ad. I should travel more often. Casper has two high-tech foams which guarantee you have a great night's sleep and you'll sleep cool and comfortable and fully supported every night. I can't wait to get home. It ships for free in a box so small you won't believe it holds a mattress. That makes it easy to get from your front door to your bedroom. And Casper does that so you can try it risk-free for 100 nights in your own home. And you don't love it? They'll come pick it up and refund you everything. They'll take back the Casper. No questions asked. Now, sleeping on a mattress is the best way to try it. Much better than lying on one in a crowded store on the neon lights with people laughing at you. From its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging and 100-night in-home trial, it's no wonder Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. Now, listen carefully. If you want to sleep cool and comfortable every night like I do at home, get a Casper. Try yours for 100 nights with free shipping and returns. Go to Casper.com. Use code SAVAGE, and you're going to get $50 towards the purchase of this mattress. That is, write it down, Casper.com. Code SAVAGE, and get $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com. Terms and conditions apply. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Well, the Savage Nation is reeling from the news story today that Trump is going to dine with Schumer and Pelosi, which unto itself is not a bad thing, but he's not going into it from a position of strength. He's going into it in a negative defensive position because Schumer already shot off his big New York yap and said, I told the president in no uncertain terms that there's not going to be a wall. Now, remember, we voted for a wall, not for a... BS artists from Brooklyn. And then he went on to say that he wants more. Not only does he want a wall, he wants the so-called dreamers. And by the way, that's such a deceptive term. What do you mean by dreamers? Look how smart the devil really is. Look how smart the left-wing fanatics are. Everything they sugarcoat and turn it into something it isn't. What do you mean they're dreamers? And you mean your child isn't a dreamer? They have no dreams. You mean your white kid, your black kid, your Asian kid, your Hispanic kid here, leg here legally? They have no dreams. Only the interlopers are allowed to have dreams. You know, I wish I could take some calls, and I have one right now, WJJF in Connecticut. Marie, make it quick, please. 30 seconds or less. Or less. Make your comment. I just want to say I agree wholeheartedly. I have, two, I have twin boys that are 18 that I am putting through college, and there is a whole spot on the application that if you are a so-called dreamer, you don't have to fill out. And they skip you right to the financial aid part, and here I am just trying to put my two streamers through school. That's why we elected and Trump, was to stop this nonsense. We elected Trump so we didn't see our children be given second-class status to illegal alien children. Enough is enough. No, Mr. President, we're not going along with you on DACA. You do that, you're done. Is that the message that you want me to say? Yes. One, Mr. Trump, I know you're going to get this message. I have been loyal to you way, way back from the beginning, long before Sean Hannity, long before anybody in the media. I was there for you. And my loyalty is first to the truth, to honesty, and to my audience. It's not to Chuck Schumer and the swamp. 
And if you legalize these 800,000 or a million illegal aliens and steal the resources that are there for our children, you'll be one and done. Is that what you want me to say, Marie? Absolutely. They have to go to a community college. I cannot afford both of them to go to a other college. Have you been to a community college? I read it last week. Have you seen what programs they have only for illegal alien interlopers? Have you seen the, the buildings they have for them, the programs, the administrators, the advisors only for illegal alien loper, elopers? Absolutely. And here interlopers, I am so angry. I'm almost getting tongue-tied. Enough is enough. Schumer is a liar. He's a backstabber. He's anti-American. And we don't want you going along with Schumer, President Trump. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I made it so, so clear to the president that there is not going to be a wall in the appropriations process or in others. And I heard that somebody, I don't know who it was, Mark Short issued a statement that says we're not going to tie the wall to dreamers. That's a very, very good thing and good progress. I've told him over and over again. At one point he said to me, go easy on the wall. I said no. Who is the peasant Avante pulling the strings? Does anyone have an answer to that? Well, I, do you think there's a person? There is so much money getting kicked up to the top on the illegal alien business that there are many peasant Avantes. So here's compassionate Schumer concerned about his base, which consists of illegal aliens in New York City, not concerned about the American people who are holding two jobs to send their children to college, and uh, he gets away with it. And he says to the president, the president sounded like he was begging. He said, at one point, he said to me, go easy on the wall. And I said, no, the thing is upside down. It seems that not the swamp is one. Something is wrong with this picture. Meanwhile, the storm, I know it's over in Florida, but Jacksonville is still flooded. I didn't hear anything out of the mouth of Schumer about Jacksonville. Wall Street Journal yesterday. Tommy Nevitt carried Miranda Abbott. Through floodwaters Monday, much of the city's downtown was underwater. Jacksonville, big city, of no concern to Schumer or to anyone else. All they care about are the illegal aliens. I happen to know a little bit about Jacksonville. The family has some factories in Jacksonville, and they're not operating, and they provide an awful lot of jobs, and I never talk about it. I never talk about it, but a lot of people are not going to work in Jacksonville because they're underwater. Did you hear me? Write it down. So now let's go on to some of the callers on the Savage Nation. It's not a very good day. You could say, well, this is the way politics works, is that you compromise. Where is the compromise in dealing with uncompromising enemies of our way of life? Where is the compromise in dealing with a party that just got devastated during the last election, every election before that? Where is the compromise? Where is the compromise towards our point of view? Did you hear the corned beef man, Schumer, say once, you know what the president said to me, go easy on the wall, and I said to him, I will, but in exchange I will ask you to do the following. No, Schumer is speaking from a position of strength, and he makes it sound as though Trump is speaking from a position of meatloaf. It's that simple. Maybe I'm wrong in your mind. Why don't you tell me why I'm wrong? SBA Radio, JT Line 2, go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage, thanks for taking my call. I'm a little high rate today. Uh, Schumer and Pelosi are close to the devil it gets. And when Trump announced he was going to run, 
I, I told a lot of my friends, I said, you know, I think the Clintons put him there to sabotage the Republican Party initially. And they looked at me like I was crazy. But as the days go on, I think that's what happened. All right. Well, say that again. You actually think the Democrats put Trump there to sabotage the Republican Party? Absolutely. I think the Clintons put him there to sabotage. Wow. And I never actually heard. I never heard that theory. But well, l let's start from the, some of the things he's done that are positive. He has put in a Supreme Court justice named Gorsuch. However, I, I say that with a caveat because I have long felt that Gorsuch is going to wind up another Roberts, another liberal Republican who's not going to give us the conservatism that we hoped that he would give us. And I hope I'm wrong, but I haven't seen any indication to the contrary. What has Trump done that has pleased you thus far or has fulfilled any of his promises, the campaign promises? Anything? No. Not a Nothing? Nothing? He, he talks a lot. Are you one of those guys who hadn't voted for a long while? No, I, I always vote. But uh, he, he makes some promises, and, and I know it takes time, but... It, it, Let me ask you it, this. If, that, if the elections were held next month, would you vote for Trump again? No. You'd rather see a Democrat win? No, but he's getting bullied. He's getting bullied, and... and I'm not for that. Okay, I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Thank you for your commentary. It's very good. Let's go to WABC in New York. John, line nine, 11 minutes after the hour on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, John. Thanks for taking my call, Dr. Sarris. This is a long shot, but I believe that Trump is grooming his daughter for the presidency. Now, he's, uh, he's bringing Pelosi and Schumer in there. He's, you know how backdoor deals are made. So he brings them in, he feeds her the ravioli, gives her the, again, the pastrami, and he says, I will give you this, this, and this if you support my daughter three years, seven years from now, whatever it is. Well, I think that there's something like that, but it's not about Ivanka. I think it's something more immediate, like if you don't uh, pursue my son on the Russia investigation, uh, it might be more immediate rather than Ivanka running for the presidency. In other words, if there's any some guess on what the deal might be behind the scenes it could be something like back off on my son and my son-in-law rather than my daughter running for the presidency i don't think she has a ghost of a chance to be president i think she has no popularity whatsoever just yet but you know what the father and son who, who would vote for her for what reason what why would anyone vote for ivanka for president his, for his right now his, his approval ratings are going up correct but he's going there. yes because of course they're going up that doesn't mean he's doing the right thing does it no, no, correct, but he's doing the right thing for those undecided. Why would his approval ratings be going up? Because he's appealing to the liberals. So he's doing the right thing for the progressives, which is not the right thing for the people who put him in the presidency. So in other words, he's not giving those who put him in the presidency what they want. He's giving all those who did not vote for him what they want. Right, exactly. Back to that. Hello? Uh, what's going to happen when he wants to run again in three years? Do you think he'll come back to, your, to his base? And tell you he's going to build that wall again and lock her up? He'll flip-flop. He'll do the same thing all over again. He's going to come on the Savage Nation. Michael, I love you. You've been with me from the beginning. We're going to lock her up and build that wall. Is that what we're going to hear? Right. And by the way, you're invited to Mar-a-Lago for a scoop of ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sa I was there. Uh, I'm the police officer that called you about nine months ago about uh, Schumer and him in the carry millimeter. Uh, wait, 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 uh, wait. Schumer and what, and what millimeter? He's got a carry permit for a 9 millimeter. If you remember speaking to me about nine months. Schumer carries a gun? He's not afraid of a gun? No, no. It's always do what Schumer I strikes me as a, gun, a gunophobic man because I think he's the type that he never shot a Daisy BB gun. You're telling me he's trained to use a 9 millimeter? He is, and he tells everybody, he's, he's, you know, they're told nobody should have guns except the cops. Well, he's not that way. Don't do what I do, do what I say. But now... His, your word, so, which, so it's it's like Annie Oakley and, and Charles Schumer are a team right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he that good? Bulls, why don't we give him a name? Let's call him Nine Mill. Let's call him Nine Mill Schumer. <laughs> that sounds good. And we're not referring to a body part. We're referring to a weapon that he allegedly carries. I wanted to say something, but this is a family show. Yeah, and I was going to say that. Yeah, they, disregard that joke I just said. We're not referring to a body part. But you know what? He's been extra super nice to the cops here in Queens. So he must have... Now, what do you mean by nice to the cops? What has he done for you to, to get your vote? Over and he 
shakes your hand. You're doing a great job, guys. Blah, 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 blah. All this, you know. Okay, he's a politician. Wonderful. He's being more of a politician to the police now. So whatever he heard you or somebody in his, his cabinet yeah. heard you. Well, they know how to appeal to cops. Everyone does. You know anyone who, who attacks cops except the anti-American Black Lives Matter and those at the Nation magazine? Who else attacks them? Exactly. Exactly. Everyone else, elder, everyone else knows that you're the only firewall we have between total mayhem uh, and the, the dissolution of society. The thin blue line has been said before. Yep, exactly. Well, let, me, let me send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Thank, thank you for your help. Okay, stay in the line. I don't know. What day of today? Is what, what it's Wednesday already? Flu Tuesday. It's already Wednesday, Beverly Hills. Everyone's a star behind their car. Everyone's a star behind their bars. There's more to life than clicks. There's more to life than clicks. That's all I can say. If you live by ratings, you die by ratings. If you live by clicks, you die by clicks. And it's only two clicks to eternity. That's the title of my next book. Two clicks to eternity. I have no idea what it means, but it's a good title. What do you want me to talk about? I have other stuff. The guys put together a little sounder for you, right, Jim? A nice one on Hillary Clinton. Let's lighten things up by uh, playing the embarrassing clip. Jim's not listening again. He's talking to a caller, doesn't he? What I'm saying. He, uh, Jim, hello. Robert, wake him up. Tap him on the shoulder. Hi. We're getting ready to play a very important soundbite that Robert will play about Hillary Clinton and her book tour. Let's hear it. New from Antifa Toys, it's Robot Hillary, the amazing new robot that yells at you for Hillary Clinton losing the election. You didn't vote? How could you not vote? You'll get great robotic phrases like... You abdicated your responsibility as a citizen. And this... Now you want me to make you feel better? And of course this... We all have to live with the consequences of our decisions. Robot <laughs> Hillary, the gift all libs will love. Robot Hillary matching male pantsuits sold separately. <laughs> Good job, Jim Verde. Let's have a round of applause. For Jim Verde, call screener extraordinaire. He put that together just for your listening pleasure. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Back to a couple of things uh, on the other on the on the show the other day, I gave a refutation of Hillary where she lied. She really complained that she lost because of a number of reasons, none of which was the fact that she was not an um, let us say a um, a likable candidate. Let's make it as simple as that. And she blamed it on misogyny. I refuted that statement in a brilliant manner. No one has done a better job, and it's not linked to any website because I am not a member of the cartel that runs the conservative internet sites, nor the conservative radio shows. They're all a member of one cartel. They're all represented by one agent. One agent represents all the talk show hosts in that cartel. And therefore, you didn't hear this anywhere but on this independent show. And you'll see irrefutable logic where I say, sorry, Hillary, misogyny isn't why you lost. Nobody has a better sense of logic than I do in radio. Listen to O one. one so Clinton has a book out that will not sell well. As you well know, my books outsell hers, no matter what the height. Usually they do. And here she is blaming Comey, Russia, WikiLeaks, Facebook, fake news, voter ID laws, sexism, and misogyny for losing. I swear to God. That, I mean, you've got to say, thank God she lost. What a complainer she is. Whining. She whines and whines and whines and whines and whines her way down. Here she is blaming Russia and everyone else for losing in clip number 10. It has to be looked at in context with the Russians weaponizing information, we negative yeah, stories right. about me. Right, right, right. Russia this did whole it. WikiLeaks beginning mm -hmm. to leak in early I October of John Podesta's emails, which if you've read them all, uh, they're pretty anodyne, but they were taken out of context. The stories were made up about them. We now know oh. Facebook was... Oh, darling. Taking money from Russian companies to Again, run Russia. negative stories about me. If, Again, Russia. If you look at all of this, yes, it affected me and my campaign. 
you know, you're an embarrassment, and we are so thankful you lost, more so than ever. As flawed as Trump is, you are beyond being flawed. You are just now in the dustbin of history where you should stay. Here is clip 11, and you should thank God when you hear this one that she lost doubly. Listen to this now. I am more concerned now going forward that we haven't come to grips with what it means for future elections. I would also add that the voter suppression that we now know had been in the works and really put into effect in a lot of states like Wisconsin, North Carolina, et cetera, played a role. And then let's not forget sexism and misogyny, which are endemic to our society. And certainly, as I write in my chapter called On Being a Woman in Politics, um, have to be factored in as well. Yeah, tell that the gold in my ear. You liar. You know, you're really a sick person, Hillary. You are a very sad, sick person. Misogyny endemic to our society. Israeli society was the most sexist society on earth, and they elected a woman called gold in my ear because she was a thousand times more woman than you are. She was a leader. Do you understand that? No one, you see, I see things. I know the history of everything. She just said something that's so easily refuted, but you'll never hear this refutation on any news channel because they don't have my background. I'll say it for you again. Let's not forget misogyny, which is endemic to our society, which explains why she lost in her chapter being a woman in politics. Well, let's talk about some other women in politics in the most sexist societies on earth. How did they get elected? Shall I say Indra Gandhi? India is about as sexist as they come, but they elected her because she was a great leader. Shall I talk about... uh, if I, if I remember her name correctly, there was a, a woman in Pakistan. As sexist as a society can be uh, is Pakistan. They elected a woman. Why, Hillary? Because she wasn't a loser like you, to make, it gen- to make it very specific to you. You're a loser. You lost the election because you were unlikable. Even women didn't like you. So there are many sexist societies that elected women. Israel, Pakistan, India. I can name others. How shall I say England at the time? Margaret Thatcher, there was plenty of misogyny. She won. But they're not you, and you were nowhere near them. You couldn't, you're not up to a high heel of those women. You were always a mean-spirited, small-time, left-wing fanatic who was not capable of leading a nation. It had nothing to do with misogyny. It had to do with you. Yes, it's all about you. It's very important for you to understand how lucky we are that at the end of the day, and I would say it was God's will. So she I refuted lost. the misogyny statement. I can do all the others if you want me to, but there's no need to do it. I mean, if ever we know why she lost, it's because of her, what she's saying that during this book tour about being a complainer. Thank God we don't have that. On the other hand, if we elected Trump, we wanted something for the money. And we're getting some, but not much. And we're getting less than we thought we would, and it looks like it's going to go the other way. Now, I got an email from someone who's 10 times smarter than me. And he said, the reason he is moving towards Schumer and Pelosi is because McConnell and Ryan drag their feet. We, I've heard that a hundred times from callers, is that the Republicans drag their feet. They wouldn't give him what he wanted, so he's going to the Democrats for political survival. But here's what you haven't heard from the smartest man on earth. He said it will backfire. They hate him no matter what he does. The Democrats, Schumer, Pelosi, and all the others will stab him in the back. They will give him nothing no matter what he does. Unfortunately for him, his new crop of advisors either know that and are not telling it to him or don't know that, and they're only in it to feather their own nests, looking for a TV gig after it's all over. Like- Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. <laughs> talk about taxes for a minute. Why? So the Gateway Pundit is reporting that President Trump says tax cuts will be for the middle class, 15% for businesses, and the rich may have to pay more. Okay. So I got an email from a tax expert, a real tax expert, who said this. If the 15% rate that he is speaking of, pay attention, if the 15% rate He is speaking of for S Corporation K-1 owners. He said that would help a lot of independent businesses. 
At, um, and then she said, most larger C corps are both K1 and C, same at 39.6 currently. See, it's shorthand. Smart people speak in shorthand. So I just got this shorthand. In other words, let me re- repeat it. Many of you are not tax you know, savvy. Trump just came out and said tax cuts will be for the middle class and 15% for businesses, but the rich may have to pay more. So my tax expert said, if the 15% applies to S-Corp K-1 owners, if they share income, that would help a lot of independent businesses. And she said, most larger C-Corps pay 39.6 and that won't change. So we'll have to wait and see what happens when it happens. Just so you know, things sometimes are not what they appear to be, by the way. Incidentally, things are not always what they appear to be. People are not always what you hear they are or read about what they are. People are much different. People hear me on the radio, then they meet me, and they don't know I'm the same person. They see, quote, nice guys like Anderson Cooper, and they're not nice guys. They see Blinky, a nice guy like Wolf Blitzer, and he's a vicious piece of work, not a nice guy. They see Jake Woodpecker, they think he's a nice guy on television, and they find that he's not a nice guy. They hear me, they think I'm mean, then they find that I'm not mean. Things aren't always what you hear they, what you think they are, number one. Number two, they're not what you read necessarily either about people. You think Nancy Pelosi's a nice woman because she's in favor of giving freebies to dreamers while, sh- while, while shafting your child here in America, your white kid who have dreams too? You work for the illegal alien. You want your money going to illegal alien children, not to your own children? I again invite you to go to any college in the United States of America and ask about the Dreamer program. You'll be shocked to find out, as I was last week, what kind of buildings they have for them, advisors they have for them, scholarships they have for them, advisors they have for them. It's unbelievable what they've done. They've hijacked the university specifically for illegal aliens, and we wanted this stopped. We want a wall. We want immigration stopped. And we want all benefits to illegal aliens stopped immediately. So you tell me that you're not happy with me because I criticize the direction he seems to be going in? You may find out that I'm right and you're wrong. That he's not doing it to compromise the opposition, but to become the opposition. Daniel on KSFO Line 3, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, Dr. Savage, you know, I've been listening to you since I was six years old, and then as now, you have always been willing to be the uh, voice of truth, and particularly now with your willingness to criticize Trump, it's appreciated by the true conservatives, especially young conservatives like myself, when it can be easy to be overwhelmed by the uh, propaganda, so I wanted to uh, express my thanks. Well, I want to thank you for that. It's not easy to hear what I'm saying and understand where I'm coming from. Many people are thinking I'm disloyal to the president. But I'm very loyal to the ideas that the president used to get elected. That's the most important part of that discussion. Remember, who, what is a president? The president is a man. That's all he is, right? Yes, Dr. Savage. And men come and men go. And men are good and men are bad. Men are indifferent. Men are you know, all over the map. But this man was a businessman, and we voted for him because we said we're electing a businessman, not a politician. But if he becomes just another politician who shafts his base, what does that leave us with? Well, I think mean, it's the man who uh, lurches to the left, I believe, uh, Dr. Savage, and it uh, doesn't do uh, service to any of the people who elected him All to right. that office. I hear you. Well, I'm glad that you've list- listened to me long enough to understand the subtlety of some of the things that are going on. I think what might happen, and there could be a silver lining to my harsh, let us say, medicine that I'm trying to send to the White House. Don't think they're not hearing it. They probably have an entire division that listens to the media that they don't even appear on, and they get little briefings probably every day on what... I'm saying what others are saying about the president and where he's moving, and maybe they analyze it for him. I'll make a prediction that there's a high likelihood that in time the president will come to me and say, you know, when I first heard you saying these things about where I was going, I was very unhappy with you, and I thought I'd never want to see you again. But the longer I thought about it, Michael, the more I realized you were keeping me on track, and I want to thank you for it. You were like an older brother who kept me in line when all others were telling me I was doing great. Maybe that will happen, Daniel. You you know, you never know what tomorrow will bring. None of us do. Let me send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason because I have faith in God and in reason. That's a nice, that's a quick, that's a quick backhand. Copy of God, Faith, and Reason because I have faith both in God and reason. Very good. It is 
39 minutes after the hour. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Phone number is 855-407-282. The website is michaelsavage.com, brand new and mine. All mine. I own the domain name, michaelsavage.com. No hyphens. It's a great website. Bigger, more stories. Karen doing a great job. Imagine one woman runs this whole thing, a young woman. She graduated college, and she's gone to work for me. She just runs the whole website. And she reviews the shows. There's some of those really good stories here. I really am looking at them. Eight five. I'm just looking at my own website. I like it. It's actually a pleasure. How many of them are old? They used to be old all the time. I look in the bottom. They were there for like three years. Our elite university safe. Firemen abandoned house blaze after being attacked in Swedish no-go zone. That's an old story. Uh, her violence erupts in Caribbean after Hurricane Irma. That's an old story. But you don't know that there was a gang. I heard it last night of 800 Islanders with machetes who went hotel room to hotel room. Did you know that, Robert? Did you guys hear that story? I didn't know it. A gang of 800 Islanders went house to house and hotel room to hotel room in the Caribbean, pillaging after hurricane uh, after the hurricane. Could you believe this? That's the end of tourism. I've always seen the uh, on the belly of the Caribbean. Very dangerous. Hello, the pirates? You forgot the pirates of the Caribbean? Now, here's an important one for you on my website. Former immigration official says DACA fraud rate is 40 to 50 percent. I want you to store that one in your memory bank. That's the most important thing you're going to learn today, amongst other important things. Fraud is rampant and huge for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals DACA program. A former official with the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services Agency alleges in an, in an interview with LifeZet, former US, USCIS manager of the agency's investigative unit, Matt O'Brien alleged that the fraud rate for DACA is roughly 40 to 50 percent and potentially even higher. Under DACA, nearly 800,000 illegal aliens were given temporary protective status or work permits to remain in the U.S. During the Obama administration, background screening was near zero. 40 to 50 percent fraud rate. Now, I have to cap that off with Nancy Pelosi telling us how wonderful the students are, that they are the real heroes. They're the real patriots, not your child. No, no, not you. Not you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. The real patriots are the illegal aliens. And you wonder why people despise Schumer and Pelosi. You wonder why there was a revolution at the ballot box. KSFO, Sal Line 9, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, Mike, you know, it was you that said that an idealist like Ted Cruz could not get elected. Okay, and they, we needed somebody to go in there and work with the people that he had to work with. Yet ever since he's got elected, all you've done every day is criticize him and then explain to your listeners why you're doing that. I think Donald Trump well, tried... Well, let me take your first statement first. And, uh, Ted Cruz... Uh, hold on. Let's refute what you said from my point of view. Ted Cruz was unelectable. He couldn't win. Ted Cruz was far more of a conservative than Trump. I said so at the time, but I said he was unelectable. That's what I said. Stand that. But what Donald Trump has been trying to move forward with his agenda and the establishment Republicans have not been working with him. We, uh, we understand that. That's the party line. It's the Republicans who aren't working with him, so they, he's going over to the Democrats. That's a story that's now been running for 10 days. I understand. But what are we? But what are we getting out of him working with the Democrats? Tell me what we're going to get out of it. Well, we have to see. I mean, who else is there to work with? Or, hold on. Okay. So let's say we have to see. So did you hear the soundbite I played today of Schumer saying, "I made it clear to the president." Yeah. But did you hear that? that did you hear it or not? That's Paul. I think Donald Trump. I would like to say he's a lot smarter than that. So you mean when Schumer says, "I made it clear to the president." That he's now dictating to the president what the president should do, that didn't upset you? Yes, it did upset me. I can't stand Schumer and Pelosi both. All right, hold on. For those of you who just joined this important show today, I want you to hear Chuck Schumer, a man not loved by those who elected Trump, let's put it that way, now telling us what he's going to do tonight at dinner because he already did it in clip nine. Let's just hear it together. I made it so, so clear to the president that there is not going to be a wall in the appropriations process or in others. And I heard that somebody, I don't know who it was, Mark Short issued a statement that says, we're not going to tie the wall to dreamers. That's a very, very good thing and good progress. I've told him over and over again. At one point he said to me, go easy on the wall. I said, no. That doesn't bother you? It bothers 
me, but he's blowing smoke. You know how Schumer is. You had him on your show over the Dubai Ports deal. Oh. Now, hold on. That's another very important point because you're a real listener, you have a good memory, and you're smart. Why did I meet with Schumer on this show in uniting? Why did I unite with Schumer to try and stop the Dubai Ports deal? What was in it for both sides on that? Well, obviously, it was in our best interest not to deal with them. Right. It was in our best interest to make sure that the, I believe it was the, the people from, I don't remember the exact country. It wasn't Qatar or Qatar, however you say. It's a country I can't even pronounce. Uh, I believe it was the UAE was going to provide all of the port security for the United States of America. That was one of the worst ideas I ever heard of, and it was George Bush behind it, which would have been a disaster for our national security. So, yes, I reached across the aisle to Schumer, who also saw it for what it was. But tell me where reaching across the aisle on the Dreamers benefits us. I, I don't I don't know yet. The jury's out. I'm just saying wait, that... Wait, wait, hold on. That's a great statement. So you think we can benefit by granting amnesty to 800,000 at least illegal aliens when there's a fraud rate of 50% amongst those claiming to be students? No, no. Okay, but I think what Donald Trump is doing, he's going after the criminals, okay, like he said he would. And Check, that's good. That's one of the good things he's doing, 100% right. Okay, and he's he's also work, he's also working out trying to work out a deal like a lot of people have been doing before him. But I think Donald Trump is more sincere, where he's going to have to come to some sort of a, a, a of an agreement or some sort of a solution rather for these kids that are here through no fault of their own, and they don't even know. They've never... You see, you keep <laughs> repeating the party line, these kids, no fault of their own. Those are punchlines from the Democrat socialist uh, corrupt machine. What do you mean kids? 50% of them don't even go to college. They just collect the benefits, according to someone who's worked in that program. They're not all kids. That's number one. And all the benefits they're getting are benefits that are being stolen from our own kids. How can we not see that? See it. I see it. But having been on a school board, I know what it's like when you get in there and you have to work. Sometimes it, you have to take the long road around to get to where you want to go. And where is the money going to come from? The so-called dreamers have cost us three to $400 billion so far. Where's that money supposed to come from? You know, yeah, you have to trim some of the entitlement programs. Well, why don't you trim by not giving them any benefits? How would that be a good trim? Oh, you want them to stay here? Let them go to work like I did after school. Let them pay for their own damn uh, education. Who the hell said they're supposed to get a, a free ride in this country? I agree with you, okay? All right, so what do you mean benefits? They don't entitle to any benefits. I didn't say they did. I didn't say... All right, I appreciate the call. I mean that. Trump to dine with new friends Schumer and Pelosi. Unbelievable that people are now taking it hook, line, and sinker. They, they came here through no fault of their own. They're just kids. Go to my website, read the article. Read the article, former immigration official, DACA fraud rate 40 to 50%. And you heard it first on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Hey, this is serious business. A major credit card reporting bureau announced a breach that could affect, listen, 143 million Americans. You heard about it, right? So far, the organization determined that the credit card numbers for about 200,000 consumers and personal data, including social security numbers, for about 180,000 consumers were accessed by these criminals. Did you know you are 11 times more likely to become a victim of identity fraud if you are notified of a breach? Yeah, you heard me. Good thing there's LifeLock. Why? Because LifeLock detects a wide range of identity threats, threats you may miss by just monitoring your credit, like someone stealing from your 401k. But if there's a problem, a U.S.-based identity restoration specialist will work to fix it. That's a big deal. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but LifeLock 
can help you see more threats to your identity, please go to LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK. Use promo code SAVAGE. Write it down. That's SAVAGE for 10% off your LifeLock membership. Visit LifeLock.com and save 10% now. Wow, the two hours so far have just flown. I'm down here in um, Beverly Hills where everyone's a star. I've not met anyone who's not a star or working for a star or knows a star or is directing a star or producing a star or working on a script for a star or polishing a star's car or um, cultivating a star's nails. Everyone's a star behind their bar and behind their car uh, here in uh, Beverly Hills. So last night I went to an Italian restaurant and I ordered scongili. Now you may say, what does that have to do with anything? Scongili is a term not even known on the West Coast. It's a New Jersey, New York thing, scongili. It's something you would know from Little Italy. But it's funny. What is it? It's basically a conch shell and the muscle of the, of the snail inside the conch. But what's funny about it, there is a slang term for scongili. No, it's not, it's not at all off color. Uh, an Italian snail or whelk used in cuisine and also used as a slang term for a slow person who cannot perform normal tasks. So if you know a scongili who votes for Hillary, even though it's not in his or her interests, now you know why your father would have called that person a scongili. That's all. A little urban dictionary slang for the savage nation. It had no taste whatsoever. I'm better off with calamari. But what do you do? I wanted to try it out. The guy who owns the restaurants from New Jersey, if you get the picture, pull down one eyelid. And enjoy your calamari and scongili salad tonight on me. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. You know, we've talked a little bit about working together, and I said to the president, the best way he can show some good faith is support the Dreamers Bill, uh, supported by Senators uh, Graham and Durbin, bipartisan, urge that we move it to the floor rather quickly and get it done. No, don't move it to the floor, Chuck. Move it to the toilet. That's where it belongs. Did you hear the audacity of this corned beef eating phony? Did you hear what that corned beef eating big mouth phony just said? And in that quiet little voice of his all of a sudden, oh, we've talked a little bit about working together. And I said to the president, best way to show support is support the Dreamers bill. Uh-huh. Supported by Senators. Lindsey Graham is an example of someone we should respect. Lindsey Graham is a two-faced, backstabbing opposition figure. Durbin, I have to tell you who he is. Durbin is known as Turbin Durbin. He stabbed the Marines in the back many times verbally. You've heard that. So we're going to use these left-wing fanatics as an example, these open borders, Cretans. That's his example of showing a little good faith. The best good faith he could show is throw you in jail. Listen to number 09 now. Listen to listen how audacious this corby feeder is. I made it so, so clear to the president that there is not going to be a wall in the appropriations process or in others. You, and I heard that somebody, I don't know who it was, Mark was Short, me. issued a statement that says we're not going to tie the wall to dreamers. That's a very, very good thing and good progress. I've told him over and over again. At one point he said to me, go easy on the wall. I said no. Now you know who's in charge of the government. You woke up and you found out two of the worst villains in American, current American political history. And I'll call them villains for a reason. Anyone who's in favor of open borders is a villain as to our sovereignty. Anyone who's in favor of foreigner invaders, foreign invaders over children in this country who are deprived of those benefits is a villain. I'll go down the list. He said, I made it clear to the president. Now, this is a minority leader, meaning I don't mean minority in terms of his ethnicity. 
I'm talking about a member of the minority party. They have no ultimate power. The only power they have is the power given to them by the turncoat weakling Republicans who we put in office. That's the only place they get their power from. So this loser, Schumer, is now suddenly running the government. He made it clear to my president that there's not going to be a wall. We didn't elect you, Schumer. You were just diselected. And now you're telling me there's going to be no wall? I think we need a wall around Brooklyn, frankly. I think we ought to build a wall around Brooklyn to keep his ideas within Brooklyn because they don't belong in the rest of America. Let me tell you something, Schumer, that you don't know because you never travel outside of your little uh, Brooklyn uh, area. The rest of America does not want to grant amnesty to dreamers. Do you understand why? It's not that they're all members of the Ku Klux Klan. It's because they know what benefits have gone to the dreamers. Let me spell it out for you in dollars and cents, Schumer, something you know very well since you get all your money from big Wall Street brokers and, and will, w big Wall Street brokerages. Every dime that comes to you comes from gigantic Wall Street houses. Now you act like you're for the little guy because in New York City, the politics are run by illegal immigrants. Everybody knows there'd be no Governor Cuomo and there'd be no Senator Schumer were it not the votes of the illegal aliens. I will go to the bank with that statement. If the illegal aliens had not voted, there would be no Chuck Schumer as senator. The average American taxpayer despises this man. And now he's telling us that he's controlling the president. And you're telling me that this compromise with Schumer is good for America? Then what is America? We must pass something uh, before we leave for Christmas, that's for sure. But in doing so, we will not only be protecting the dreamers, we will be protecting the integrity of our country. So thank you, for dreamers, for being stronger than anybody. For being stronger than anybody and for actually taking some risks for your families uh, to keep America the country we take pride in being. Thank you for your patriotism. Pelosi is calling them the strongest amongst us and for their patriotism. Okay, we know she's deranged. Now, I want to show you how deranged this poor woman really is. You know, you could laugh about her, but when you realize octogenarians who are not all there are running the left-wing agenda and that so many deranged people don't understand how sick this is, Listen to what she said in 06. This is, again, the deranged Nancy Pelosi in favor of illegal aliens sucking the benefits away from our own children. Listen to 06. A week and a half ago, I was in Chicago, and I saw this art exhibit that I was invited to see. It's called, And Then They Came For Me. And it's about the internment of the Japanese-American uh, Patriots in our country who were, they were not interned, patriots, in, idiot. interned into they camps were idiot. Uh, during World War II. Why while their patriots? family members were fighting for freedom for America and for the world oh in World War II. Uh, they were in camps. And, and they came to for me. There. And now uh -huh. they're coming the jump for the dreamers. This idiot is something that we owe these dreamers for their patriotism, their courage, their optimism. To come forward. You know, the only question you have to ask yourself is why is she so in love with the dreamers and illegal aliens? There's only one answer. I don't think you have to be Einstein to understand why people like Pelosi, one of the richest women in the world, why Schumer? Why are they so in love with the dreamers? Do you think they have that much compassion? Do you think they have more compassion than I do? I'm an actually, I am actually the son of an immigrant. I know what it's like to be poor. Would you really think they do this for compassion or because money flows straight up stream and the votes come their way? You understand that it's all cynical? Why is Schumer so in love with illegal aliens? Because without them, he wouldn't be elected to the Senate. It's the same with Pelosi. It's the same with all of them. The whole Democrat Party is built upon fraud. So I listen to this stuff, and I listen to the lies. I mean, I can deconstruct them and tell you what really is true about it. What's the point of wasting your time? Pelosi is, a, is, a, is so full of baloney. They're all patriots. All the Japanese who were interred were patriots. No, they weren't. They were ordinary Japanese. And as sad as that was, the internment was done by the evil Democrat, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the liberal socialist Democrat, by the way. He decided to inter the Japanese Americans in World War II. It was not an evil Ku Klux Klan member. It was a socialist Democrat who did it. And then she says the dreamers, who are stronger than anybody else. I think the poor white kids and the poor black kids are actually stronger than anyone else. 
I think the poor white kids and the poor black kids who go to school every day, maybe working after school, and get no benefits whatsoever because the benefits are being sucked away from them for non-citizen children, I think that the American children are far more uh, American and far more deserving of our respect. Pre-order Savage's forthcoming book, God, Faith, and Reason. The search to find God, that's a great statement. Everyone's quoting that. The search to find God is the finding itself. That could be the one statement I've made that could resonate around the world, except with, with everyone except the Pope. The search to find God is the finding itself, because to the Pope, I don't understand this guy. Well, I understand him too well. I have a story I linked with my headline. It says, Marxist Pope meddles in U.S. politics again. He did, again, stuck his beak into our politics, told us to accept every refugee who comes here. Then there's a picture, sporting a black guy, Pope urges Colombians to reconcile. There's something odd about a white Pope with a black eye that I can't put together. Can you? I said it to the guys today before the show. I said, it's odd. A white Pope with a black eye, there's something weird about that picture. How'd he get? He slipped? Like in a bathtub? Wait, it must, have, must be in the story. Pope Francis wrapped the Columbia trip honoring a fellow Jesuit minister to Africa, cutting in rocket. When he bonked his head on his Pope mobile? When it stopped short amid swarms of well wishers. Pope Francis, who had only a hip high bar, that's cute, hip high bar. That could be a new rock group called Hip High Bar. To hold on to, lost his balance and suffered a bruised black left. Well, our, our hopes and prayers go out to the Pope to hope that his black eye uh, is healed as quickly as possible. We hope that his eye heals quickly so he can continue to meddle in politics around the world. Still hasn't taken any refugees into the Vatican yet. Oh, this guy is very clever. I warned you about it. Do you remember in Government Zero, I wrote an entire chapter on the, on the, on the Leninist Pope? It was all based on logic, scientific method. I'm the only one in talk radio who has an actual PhD in a hard science. I don't read other people's opinions on science unless it's backed up with data. And then I draw conclusions based upon the data as best I can, even in fields in which I'm not an expert. Because you don't have to be an expert in all fields to understand how to read data. You have to learn. You have to know how to read data. And you have to know how to read statistics. That's all you have to know how to do. That's all. A friend of mine sent me a syllabus for a local community college that's very big on dreamers. You know what a dreamer is, don't you? That's someone from another country who's not a citizen who steals precious resources that American kids don't get. Of course they're dreamers. You'd be a dreamer too if you could rip the country off. You'd also be a dreamer if you live in a stupid country that gave you something and don't even give their own children. Sure you'd dream. Sure you'd be mad and call them every name under the sun if they didn't give you what you were getting for nothing. If they suddenly woke up to the rip-off and all the do-gooders who were ripping off the country. It only cost us $400 billion so far for the dreamers. I love everything I get every day from these left-wing groups. Dream of this, dream of that. The American kids, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, they're not dreamers. Everyone else is a dreamer. So uh, someone sent me a course at Sonoma State College. William L. sent it. There's actually a specialty called social justice. This, could you imagine what this country will be like in 10 or 20 years with this kind of cr trash, putting this into the heads of kids? Wait till I read the syllabus to you. Now, I want you to think about men like Boeing who built the first jetliner, meaning the first commercial jetliner. There'd be no, there'll be no Boeings. Or think about the men who built Miami Beach, who brought a railroad from New York to bring in people. There'll be no railroads. There'll be no developments, nothing. Or there'll be is hate. Social justice studies required core complete 9.00 units. Psych 34, the psychology of prejudice and discrimination. Not how to build a better bridge, not how to build a better, a better tunnel, not how to build a better airplane, but the psychology of prejudice and discrimination. This is so racist, it's unbelievable. SOS 30, race and ethnic relations. Psych 40, introduction to psychology of gender. Can you imagine if Mr. Boeing had been forced to take this kind of brainwashing crap? Counsel, uh, counseling 20. Complete any combination totaling at least 3.00 units from the following. Sex and gender. History, 18.2. History of women in the United States since 1877. See, so it makes it sound like it's historic. History, 21. Race, ethnicity, and gender in American culture. History, 26. History of Chicanos and Latinos from 1848 to present. Wow, is that kind of racist. 
How about history of white men from 1848 to present? Why isn't that taught? History 30, African-American history, three credits. History of Mexico, three credits. Psych 34, we did that one already. And anyway, you get the picture. The leftists have destroyed the academy. They have destroyed learning. They've, they've destroyed reason. The entire citadel of reason has been torn apart. You know, you saw them tearing down the Robert E. Lee statues. One way or the other, you could side with it. But when they tore down civilization itself with this trash, that was the beginning of the end of the United States of America and Western civilization, by the way. Area 2, Arts and Humanities. Anthro 31, Mesoamerican Origins of Latino Culture. Anthro 43, Native American Art and Culture. English 31, African American Literature. English 33, Chicano Chicana Arts and Literature. Now here, this is a great one. English 36, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Arts and Literature. Oh, I can go on. It's just so depressing. Uh, theater 6, Multicultural Perspectives in American Theater. Do you understand that we cannot have a civilization if it's this pointedly absent of civilization per se? If you so segment society like this, what you do is destroy it altogether. That's my opinion. I just wanted you to see what they're doing to our children in the colleges today. Social justice studies as a major. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how godless this is? You speak of God, faith, and reason. Social justice studies lack God, lacks faith, and lacks reason. It is pure, unadulterated prejudice in plain English. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Why do you think I wrote Trump's war? Because I knew the war was going to begin when he got elected. That was the whole point of the book, which is to remind people what it was he promised and what it is we told him he had to do. So how much of that that is in my book, Trump's war, is has he actually done? Some of it, yes. To, to be very honest, and thank God he has done some very, very good things. And also you can look at it in the negative. He hasn't done some bad things. But if he goes to the primary reason we voted for him and he doesn't deliver on that, I'm afraid he's going to lose the entire base. That's my opinion. And here's what's going to happen. Let's, let's be very simple. There is, a large number, there, are a, there is a large number of people in this country who never vote. I specifically told you to come out and vote if you hadn't voted for the last four elections or three. I said, please come out and vote for Trump. And it was that small margin that put this man over the top. When that vote goes away, when they no longer vote, tell me who's going to be left for him. The ladies in the Republican clubs, they're always going to go along with them. They don't really know what's going on. All they care that it has an R next to its name. And they get to go to places with funny hats and throw couches out of hotel windows. That's all they want to do is, is see balloons and couches flying from the 19th floor at Republican National Committee meetings. They don't really care what Republicanism is. It's a, it's a team to them, a club. But I'm not in it for a team or a club, and I am not a Republican. I'm an independent conservative. And I am saying to everyone listening to this show, if you're one of those people who came out and voted for the first time because of me or for your own reasons, I know you don't have to call me and tell me you're never going to vote again. And that is going to be the end of Trump's revolution. Maybe that's exactly what the swamp wants, is to be the end of you and end, and end of the revolution. They want the swamp to get higher, not lower. They have put hoses into the swamp, and they're not draining the swamp. They're adding to it. That's what's going on. I, I ter It's a terrible situation because people are saying, oh, well, you're not loyal to him. You're not this. They don't even understand what loyalty is. I am loyal first to the truth. Next, I'm loyal to my audience. And most importantly, I'm loyal to God. And the day I start defying those loyalties, I should not be on radio and I will quit. I'll tell you that the day I suddenly become one of these quizlings who go, go along with the program because Trump's doing it, I will leave radio rather than do that. I'll tell you point blank. And if I lose half my audience, that's what's going to have to happen. If they're not smart enough to understand that loyalty means loyalty to an idea, not to a man, then I don't even want them to be disappointed in me because they don't know who I am. I'm a commentator. All I have is my integrity. I'm supposed to go along with Trump's move all of a sudden? I'm not going to do it. He's 100% wrong. If he thinks that we're going to sit here and say, we salute you, Mr. President, because you just said we're going to knock off the wall because Schumer doesn't want it, and we're going to accept the dreamers, I'm not going along with it. That's all there is to it.
This is very interesting to me. Trump to dine with new friends Schumer and Pelosi. Now, many of you will say, that's great. That's just great, because that's what Ivanka wanted, and that's what most Democrats wanted. It's not what the conservative base would like to see. They'd like to see both Pelosi and Schumer in prison. But since the base has been used as a footstool to get where they are, they don't need you anymore. They've done the calculation, and they figure they can lose 30 40% of you and gain 34% or more, if not more, from the middle, and you can do what with yourself? Figure it out. In other words, it's politics as usual. We didn't elect a businessman. We elected a politician. And we're going to find out what part of the agenda we get as the politician emerges who we didn't know existed. It's politics as usual. So he's dining with his new pals, Pelosi and Schumer. And, of course, you know what Schumer and Pelosi want, don't you? You haven't figured it out yet? Well, Schumer doesn't want a border wall, but he wants the DREAM Act and Obamacare fixed. I wonder what Pelosi wants. So tonight, Schumer is going to demand open borders, no border wall, and he wants the DREAM Act, which means... I just love the word dreamers. Of course they're dreamers. Wouldn't you be a dreamer if you were taking away resources that were not yours? Wouldn't you be a dreamer if you were stealing resources, scarce resources at that, that were there for American children, not for children who didn't belong here to begin with? I know it sounds harsh, but let me tell you something. We're in a sinking lifeboat, and there's only so many people who can fit in that sinking lifeboat. You keep bringing people on that sinking lifeboat, and everyone dies. So I looked at the dining menu for tonight. The New York Post reports it's unclear what the menu will include, though Trump is known to favor the meatloaf served up at the White House. I don't know where served up comes from. Is that a colloquialism? I thought it would be served at the White House. What do you mean served up? Who's this reporter? Okay, as well as well-done steak with ketchup, another very classy dish that I'm sure will go over well when the French come to dinner. Schumer's favorite sandwich is dubbed the Shumwich. It's a gut-busting mix of roast beef, banana peppers, pickled jalapenos, extra onions, extra tomatoes, two layers of schmaltz, extra fat pickles, mayonnaise, extra schmaltz, and mustard on hearty Italian bread. That's for Schumer. Pelosi, citing a northern Italian heritage, said that she likes a bologna sandwich with extra bologna made on special bologna bread that comes from Bologna. Also risotto and pesto. But Pelosi also told Food and Wine magazine that she's been, quote, eating dark chocolate ice cream for breakfast for as long as I can remember. Well, it's one thing those of us who are health attuned have learned today, knowing that Pelosi's been eating dark chocolate ice cream for breakfast for as long as I can remember. We know that dark chocolate ice cream for breakfast definitely doesn't prevent senility. Here's a couple other stories on the Savage Nation. They're defacing statues because of the leftists who are running big cities. For example, in New York City, the Sandinista-loving left-wing fanatical mayor, de Blasio, started attacking statues that didn't represent Karl Marx or Karl Icahn. And so right away, the vermin in the street, the vandals, started defacing statues. They started with Columbus. They've gone on to others. And I'd like to ask you something. A piece of garbage in New York City just defaced a statue in New York, another one. I don't know about you, but to me it reminds me of ISIS when they took over certain cities. What do you think the punishment should be for defacing statues in America? Because I have my own opinion on that. Living in a country where ISIS members, disguised as leftists who care about humanity, are defacing the statues that represent the heritage of this nation, whether it be Christopher Columbus or others, I'd like to know what you think what do you think should be the punishment if you are caught defacing statues in the United States of America? Okay? Racist anthem spray painted on a 106-year-old Francis Scott Key statue in Baltimore. Now, whoever did this, whoever defaced this statue is identical to ISIS. They're cowards. They're vandals. They need to be hunted down. If there are any video cameras, I want them hunted down, and I want a stiff sentence for anybody, anybody who disrespects our statues. If you want a statue gone, you go through the statutes of the land. You do it democratically. If you deface it on your own and you are caught, I want to know what the uh, punishment should be. What do you think it should be? I know what it should be. What should the punishment be for defacing statues in America? First, it was Robert E. Lee and nothing happened to the vermin who did it. Okay. Then it was Columbus because de Blasio wanted Columbus gone and nothing happened to the vermin who defaced Columbus. 
Now they're spray, spray painting the man who gave us the national anthem, Francis Scott Key. Tell me who would do a thing like that. Well, I know who would do a thing like that, and I know what the punishment should be. But we don't live in Saudi Arabia. See, if we lived in Saudi Arabia, we'd have a punishment to fit the crime. I'll let you figure out what that punishment might be. Well, the savage nation is reeling from the news story today that Trump is going to dine with Schumer and Pelosi, which unto itself is not a bad thing. But he's not going into it from a position of strength. He's going into it in a negative defensive position because Schumer already shot off his big New York yap and said, I told the president in no uncertain terms that there's not going to be a wall. Now, remember, we voted for a wall, not for a BS artist from Brooklyn. And then he went on to say that he wants more. Not only does he want a wall, he wants the so-called dreamers. And by the way, that's such a deceptive term. What do you mean by dreamers? Look how smart the devil really is. Look how smart the left-wing fanatics are. Everything they sugarcoat and turn it into something it isn't. What do you mean they're dreamers? And you mean your child isn't a dreamer? They have no dreams? You mean your white kid, your black kid, your Asian kid, your Hispanic kid here, leg here legally? They have no dreams? Only the interlopers are allowed to have dreams? That's why we elected Trump, was to stop this nonsense. We elected Trump so we didn't see our children be given second-class status to illegal alien children. Enough is enough. No, Mr. President, we're not going along with you on DACA. You do that, you're done. Is that the message that you want me to say? One, Mr. Trump, I know you're going to get this message. I have been loyal to you way, way back from the beginning, long before Sean Hannity, long before anybody in the media. I was there for you. And my loyalty is first to the truth to honesty and to my audience. It's not to Chuck Schumer and the swamp. And if you legalize these 800,000 or a million illegal aliens and steal the resources that are there for our children, you'll be one and done. Is that what you want me to say? Have you been to a community college? I read it. Have you seen what programs they have only for illegal alien interlopers? Have you seen the, the buildings they have for them, the programs? The administrators, the advisors, only for illegal alien loper, elopers, interlopers. I am so angry, I'm almost getting tongue-tied. Enough is enough. Schumer is a liar, he's a backstabber, he's anti-American, and we don't want you going along with Schumer, President Trump. Schumer had the audacity, this interloper from New York, had the nerve to say, I told the president, I told the president this, I told the president that. Who the hell does he think he is? What do you mean he told the president? He's a minority leader. He's not the majority leader. He's a minority leader. What do you mean? I told the president. Who is he to come here? Tell the president what to do. So, you know, here's the problem. On the Internet, I'm getting a lot of attacks on my website, on my Twitter account, for people who don't understand that either you believe in something or you don't believe in something. If you don't believe in something, then what are you? Tell me. If you don't believe in something, if you have no principles, what, what are you? What, what are you made of? Who are you? Who is the peasant Avante pulling the strings? Does anyone have an answer to that? Well, I, do you think there's a person? There is so much money getting kicked up to the top on the illegal alien business that there are many peasant Avantes. So here's compassionate Schumer concerned about his base, which consists of illegal aliens in New York City, not concerned about the American people who are holding two jobs to send their children to college, and uh, he gets away with it. And he says to the president, the president sounded like he was begging. He said, at one point, he said to me, go easy on the wall. And I said, no, the thing is upside down. It seems that not the swamp is won. Something is wrong with this picture. Meanwhile, the storm, I know it's over in Florida, but Jacksonville is still flooded. I didn't hear anything out of the mouth of Schumer about Jacksonville. Wall Street Journal yesterday. Tommy Nevitt carried Miranda Abbott. Through floodwaters Monday, much of the city's downtown was underwater. Jacksonville, big city, of no concern to Schumer or to anyone else. All they care about are the illegal aliens. I happen to know a little bit about Jacksonville. The family has some factories in Jacksonville, and they're not operating, and they provide an awful lot of jobs, and I never talk about it. I never talk about it, but a lot of people are not going to work in Jacksonville because they're underwater. It's not a very good day. 
You could say, well, this is the way politics works, is that you compromise. Where is the compromise in dealing with uncompromising enemies of our way of life? Where is the compromise in dealing with a party that just got devastated during the last election, every election before that? Where is the compromise? Where is the compromise towards our point of view? Did you hear the corned beef man, Schumer, say once, you know what the president said to me, go easy on the wall, and I said to him, I will, but in exchange I will ask you to do the following? No. Schumer is speaking from a position of strength, and he makes it sound as though Trump is speaking from a position of meatloaf. It's that simple. What do you want me to talk about? I have other stuff. The guys put together a little sounder for you, right, Jim? A nice one on Hillary Clinton. Let's lighten things up by... Uh, playing the embarrassing clip. We're getting ready to play a very important soundbite that Robert will play about Hillary Clinton and her book tour. Let's hear it. New from Antifa Toys, it's Robot Hillary, the amazing new robot that yells at you for Hillary Clinton losing the election. You didn't vote? How could you not vote? You'll get great robotic phrases like... You abdicated your responsibility as a citizen. And this... Now you want me... To make you feel better? And of course this. We all have to live with the consequences of our decisions. Robot Hillary, the gift all libs will love. Robot Hillary matching now pants who sold separately. (laughs) Good job, Jim Verde. Let's have a round of applause for Jim Verde, call screener extraordinaire. I mean, if ever we know why she lost, it's because of what she's saying during this book tour about being a complainer. Thank God we don't have that. On the other hand, if we elected Trump, we wanted something for the money. And we're getting some, but not much. And we're getting less than we thought we would, and it looks like it's going to go the other way. Now, I got an email from someone who's 10 times smarter than me. And he said, the reason he is moving towards Schumer and Pelosi is because McConnell and Ryan drag their feet. We, I've heard that 100 times from callers, is that the Republicans drag their feet. They wouldn't give him what he wanted, so he's going to the Democrats for political survival. But here's what you haven't heard from the smartest man on earth. He said it will backfire. They hate him, no matter what he does. The Democrats, Schumer, Pelosi, and all the others will stab him in the back. They will give him nothing, no matter what he does. Unfortunately for him, his new crop of advisors either know that and are not telling it to him, or don't know that, and they're only in it to feather their own nests, looking for a TV gig after it's all over. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. talk about taxes for a minute. Why? So the Gateway Pundit is reporting that President Trump says tax cuts will be for the middle class, 15% for businesses, and the rich may have to pay more. Okay. So I got an email from a tax expert, a real tax expert, who said this. If the 15% rate that he is speaking of, pay attention, if the 15% rate He is speaking of for S Corporation K-1 owners. He said that would help a lot of independent businesses. um, And then she said most larger C Corps are both K-1 and C, same at 39.6 currently. See, it's shorthand. Smart people speak in shorthand. So I just got this shorthand. In other words, let me repeat it. Many of you are not tax, you know, savvy. Trump just came out and said tax cuts will be for the middle class and 15% for businesses, but the rich may have to pay more. So my tax expert said, if the 15% applies to S-Corp K-1 owners, if they share income, that would help a lot of independent businesses. And she said, most larger C-Corps pay 39.6 and that won't change. So we'll have to wait and see what happens when it happens. Just so you know, things sometimes are not what they appear to be, by the way. Incidentally, things are not always what they appear to be. People are not always what you hear they are or read about what they are. People are much different. People hear me on the radio, then they meet me, and they don't know I'm the same person. 
They see, quote, nice guys like Anderson Cooper, and they're not nice guys. They see Blinky, a nice guy like Wolf Blitzer, and he's a vicious piece of work, not a nice guy. They see Jake Woodpecker, they think he's a nice guy on television, and they find that he's not a nice guy. They hear me, they think I'm mean, then they find that I'm not mean. So things aren't always what you hear, they, what you think they are, number one. Number two, they're not what you read necessarily either about people. You think Nancy Pelosi's a nice woman because she's in favor of giving freebies to dreamers while, sh- while, while shafting your child here in America, your white kid who have dreams too? You work for the illegal alien. You want your money going to illegal alien children, not to your own children? I again invite you to go to any college in the United States of America and ask about the Dreamer program. You'll be shocked to find out, as I was last week, what kind of buildings they have for them, advisors they have for them, scholarships they have for them, advisors they have for them. It's unbelievable what they've done. They've hijacked the university specifically for illegal aliens, and we wanted this stopped. We want a wall. We want immigration stopped. And we want all benefits to illegal aliens stopped immediately. So you tell me that you're not happy with me because I criticize the direction he seems to be going in? You may find out that I'm right and you're wrong. That he's not doing it to compromise the opposition, but to become the opposition. Now here's an important one for you on my website. Former USCIS manager of the agency's investigative unit, Matt O'Brien, alleged that the fraud rate for DACA is roughly 40 to 50% and potentially even higher. Under DACA, nearly 800,000 illegal aliens were given temporary protective status or work permits to remain in the U.S. During the Obama administration, background screening was near zero. 40 to 50 percent fraud rate. Now, I have to cap that off with Nancy Pelosi telling us how wonderful the students are, that they are the real heroes. They are the real patriots. Not your child. No, no, not you. Not you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. The real patriots are the illegal aliens. And you wonder why people despise Schumer and Pelosi. You wonder why there was a revolution at the ballot box? Savage.